In the July-August 1992 edition of Biblical Archaeological Review magazine, there was a story called Mystery Circles on the Golan. This is uh, Rogam Hiri, a strange, ancient high place. Was this the place where the legendary giants of the Old Testament worshipped their pagan gods? Uh, this is uh, one of the theories put forth, and Gary Stearman is here to discuss these ancient circles. And in particular, this uh, book here by uh, Pat De La, uh, Delgado called Circular Evidence, the Crop Circles of England. Are they related, Gary? Who made these mysterious circles? Well, JR, you've just shown two exhibits. One, uh, a stone circle uh, from the mid-third millennium B.C. That's uh, Rogam Hiri on the Golan Heights. It's 1,700 feet in diameter, uh, about 250,000 cubic feet of stones, just enormous thing. The central uh, platform of Rogam Hiri is 60 feet in diameter. It's a huge mm -hmm. uh, layout, and, and it's a circular layout on flat ground, a center of worship. Now, that, let's go from the mid-third millennium B.C. all the way up to 1995, and we have crop circles appearing in, in uh, fields, grain fields, all over the United States. And let me just read a, a word or two from the, from the back of uh, this book called Circular Evidence, and I'm quoting, in the summer of 1981, Pat Delgado brought to the attention of the British press the existence of some mysterious circular impressions in the fields uh, at Cheesefoot Head, Hampshire. Since then, the appearance of similar circles in southern England and around the world, many of them striking in their symmetry and beauty, have transformed initial curiosity into a full-blown investigation. The crop circles, they seem to defy analysis, really. They appear overnight. Uh, they, are, they are beautifully, intricately interwoven. The, the crops are laid down in braided patterns. Uh, they, they, they are not broken at the ground. And you say these are appearing all over the United States? United States, Canada, they're being seen in Russia, China, Australia, uh, crop circles. And in fact, a whole study of these has grown up. It's called seriology, believe it or not, because yeah. uh, the pheno phenomenon seems to appear most often in cereal crops like wheat and oats. Now these first came to prominence in England. Mm -hmm. Um, and in southern England, I suppose, in particular, around uh, Stonehenge. Right. Is there, does that make some kind of an ancient Druid connection there? Well, I think it does, because in southern England you have uh, ancient pagan worship sites. Avebury, a circular city with two circular Stonehenge-like uh, monuments in it. Uh, Cerny Abbas, a circular site. Glastonbury, Old Sarum, the Seven Barrows, an ancient worship site. Uh, something called Silbury Hill, which, uh, and we'll get a picture of this on the screen so you can see it. A beautiful cone-shaped hill with a flat top, all made by hand with primitive tools. Hmm. And it's uh, 130 feet high, JR. It's almost uh, like a, a pyramid, if you will, except that it's earthworks. Uh, and then there's White Horse, a famous chalk horse built into the ground, and Stonehenge itself, which is a circular uh, monument that calculates, among other things, the summer solstice of the sun, and uh, has in excited all kinds of imagination. Who were the priests of ancient Stonehenge? Certainly they were pagan priests, and it's in this region of ancient pagan worship which is uh, circular in nature. There are, there are barrows, there are circular mounds on the ground, there are mm -hmm. circular earthworks, there are circular hills. And in the midst of all this, there are at least 18 well-documented sites of crop circles appearing spontaneously overnight. Mm. Now, here's the infamous Doug and Dave who came and said, <laughs> we made the crop circles. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. Ah, yes. A couple of uh, British uh, inhabitants of the the local pub network came forth after the crop circles uh, uh, became really an international phenomenon. They needed explaining. And out of the woodwork came Dave and Doug, a couple of pub crawlers who uh, announced that they went out night after night with flashlights and little sights on their, the brims of their baseball caps. 
and chains and ropes and poles. And they demonstrated to the to international media that they were the ones who made all the crop circles. The media took their pictures and went home satisfied that Dave and Doug uh, and a number of other hoaxers had made these, uh, these uh, crop circles. But JR, the crop circles appear overnight in pitch black uh, when often there is only a, a minimum time to work, perhaps one hour, maybe two hours. Uh, they, the crop circles occur under the noses of investigators who are camped all, out all night and watching. And furthermore, they are formed in an amazing way because not only are the crops interwoven, sometimes in spirals and sometimes in braids, but also where the crops are bent down at the ground, uh, microscopic investigation of the stems suggests that they were softened and bent into a flattened position and they hardened up again. They never are crumpled or broken. Now Dave and Doug could not do that. Mm. So you attach some kind of supernatural entity to this? I do and I would flatly say that it's the product of a demonic uh, illusion of power, and I use the word illusion yeah, so because the, I don't believe the demons have real power in the sense that uh, we have the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God. I think demons, uh, particularly by the way in pagan England, and, and even as we speak in, in the modern era, England has become a post-Christian nation. No, that's, uh, this is not just a modern phenomena, is it? It goes back into the ancient past, doesn't it, in England, and I believe Ireland, Scotland? England, Scotland, Europe, even the Middle East. Uh, uh, there's some evidence that these circles were built in imitation of the circles that, the, that ancient pagans saw on the ground. And they, mm. they took these circles to be manifestations of the gods and they imitated them by building stone monuments like Stonehenge or like Rogam Hiri, uh, which you talked about just a moment ago. Mm -hmm. These stone circular platforms or altars or worship centers or power centers uh, I think are the product of the pagan imagination responding to demonic force which can uh, I think in special circumstances manifest itself as and leaving by leaving traces on the ground vortex or swirling traces on the ground. Now this uh these crop circles, you say, are possibly uh, produced demonically. Back in the ancient past, there were things uh, in England called crop killers or fairy uh, As a matter of fact, fairy uh, rings. Tell us about that. Matter of fact, even Martin Luther, <clears throat> in his uh, work called Table Talk, Talk, writes of a uh, a phenomenon called the kill crop. Well, this was the German name for evil spirits who trampled down crops in a circular fashion. They were called kill crops. Mm -hmm. uh, Martin Luther was aware of this phenomenon back in his day, back at the time of the Reformation. And of course we go back into the dim mists of time and we find that pagans built their altars in circular fashion, believing them to be power centers and believing that they were imitating what the gods would fervently desire. Now here's the tie-in, uh, J.R., prophetically, biblically, the Bible speaks of something it calls a high place. Mm -hmm. And we read about these high places in Scripture, and sometimes we wonder what they really were. But I think the modern crop circle phenomenon enables us to, yeah, um, to in, see. In the, for example, at Megiddo, there is a circular altar there mm -hmm. for sacrifices, a pagan altar, That's by the right. way. Yeah. And uh, this, this uh, picture here of the mystery circles on the Golan Heights by Biblical Archaeological Review, is it possible that these people built these circles to look like the ancient uh, starships or UFOs or flying saucers that uh, the demons mm -hmm. used to come <clears throat> and visit with these uh, ancient people? Or perhaps uh, they observed circular traces on the ground and said, well, this is what the gods really like and we'll just try to imitate it to the best of our ability. And we find circular altars all over yeah. the world. And we would have to admit that this is man-made, but the yeah. crop circles are something else, aren't they? They are made by seemingly supernatural phenomena, and they seem to be tied into the UFO mystery. And what I think we have here, JR, is a latter-day unleashing, if you will, of demonic power. Uh, that something similar to something to that which must have happened in ancient days when ancient man was uh, 
fully free to worship in a pagan fashion mm. and worshiped the gods in their illusion of power. Mm -hmm. And the gods uh, could alter to some degree or other the local environment and produce traces. These people imitated the traces, mm -hmm. believed those to be power points or sacred spots where, wherein they could touch the gods and thus was born the pagan ancient high place. Mm. An incredible study. Fairy rings. Yeah, we'll talk about the fairies in just a moment and, uh, and the leprechauns. Yeah, the little people. Uh, there are myths going back into the dim mists of time about the little people. Whether you call them elves, trolls, fairies, as they're called in the Middle East, genes, which, from which comes our word genie. Uh, the, these little supernatural people are said by the locals to inhabit power sites or power circles. Uh, in Ireland, a circle in, a, in the crop or a burned circle on the ground is called a fairy circle. Well, a fairy we think of as Tinkerbell, but actually uh, a fairy was thought by the Irish and by various uh, countries in Europe, cultures in Europe, to be a demonic spirit capable, by the way, of the most horrendous mischief, including abduction. Uh, mothers warned their children not to wander too close to a fairy circle because you can be abducted there and we'll never see you again. Abduction. Mm. Why, J.R., don't I recognize abduction as a phenomenon associated with the modern UFO mythology? It's Incredible. all the same thing. Just a different generation, different names, different titles, different vocabulary. Right. But it all goes back to the ancient past. The first account of the high place is given in the book of Numbers, chapter 23, when Balaam was called by Balak, the king of Moab, to put a curse upon the children of Israel. They went up to a high place and built seven altars. There they sacrificed seven oxen and seven rams. Balak did as Balaam had spoken, and Balak and Balaam offered on every altar a bullock and a ram. Verse 3 says, And Balaam said unto Balak, Stand by thy burnt offering, and I will go. Peradventure the Lord will come to meet me, and whatsoever he showeth me I will tell thee. And he went to an high place. Hmm. The next verse says, And God met Balaam. High now, place. God came down to this high place and met with Balaam. This, this is an incredible story here, but it has to be true. It's in the scripture. And by the way, this high place, J.R., can be positive or negative. We read that the prophet Samuel regularly gave sacrifice in a high place. Uh, mm -hmm. Ramah of Gilead, there, there were some hills there. and One of them was his high place. Uh, we also read of the, high, the concept of the high place in various places in Scripture, for example, Mount Sinai, where God met man. Mm -hmm. And maybe perhaps Mount Hermon, where the transfiguration uh, took place. Uh, so there is a positive aspect to the high place, but there's also a very negative aspect, as when Solomon is said to have built high places. Uh, in fact, in 1 Kings 11.7, it says, Then did Solomon build in high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. High places were regularly built devoted to pagan deities. Yes. And these high places were not high in the sense that they had a lot of altitude necessarily, but they were high in the sense that they took one to the vicinity of the gods, where one could meet the gods. But they were symbolically high. They were on top of a hill. So, this yes. hill where uh, Solomon built the altars to the gods of his wives was called the Hill of Evil Counsel. Indeed. And so there was an evil entity that met, evidently, some kind of spirituality that took place on that mountain just across the Valley of Hinnom, mm. or Gehenna as we would call it. This great gulf across from one hill to the yeah. other was the Temple Mount where God lived, and so right. it too was in high place. Wasn't exactly, it? and I guess we've got the battle of the high places, the evil ones versus the true ones, and the one true high place, Mount Zion, uh, where God will one day meet man. In fact, uh, the Lord will be seated mm -hmm. on a throne there. But J.R., what we've got here is an ancient, pagan, demonic counterfeit or imitation of that which will one day be true. Uh, in the uh, National Geographic uh, magazine, J January 1977, 
There was an article written concerning North American medicine wheels, as they're called. These uh, medicine wheels are stone circles, very much like Rogam Hiri, laid out on the ground. And they're laid out so that you can find the summer solstice, you can find the solstice risings and settings of prominent stars like Rigel and Sirius. And, by the way, they are spiritual power points. Uh, the author of the article in the Geographic uh, concerning the construction of these uh, medicine wheels writes, but no one really knew who made it or when or why. When archaeologists came to see the site in this century, this is a, the Bighorn medicine wheel, they asked the local Crow tribesmen what they knew of the formation. The answers were enigmatic. It was here when we came. It was built by people who had no iron. The sun built it to show us how to build a teepee. And in fact, to the Shoshone Indians, he writes, it was built to honor the little people who supposedly live in caverns beneath the wheel and who survive on the meat of the bighorn sheep." End quote. There they are again, J.R., the little people. Mm -hmm. And we find them time and time and time again in pag pagan worship. Amazing. You know, remember back at the original Tower of Babel, men said, go to, let us make us a city and a tower. Mm -hmm. This was a counterfeit of God's high place. In fact, the Bible talks about the mountain of the Lord yes. and the mountain of the Lord's house. In Revelation chapter 19, uh, John sees the holy city of New Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven. And the angel that had showed him through the book of Revelation says, come, let me show you the uh, bride, the lamb's wife. Mm -hmm. And he took me up into a high mountain and showed me that great city. So this city was a mm -hmm. mountain of sorts. It's, it's yeah. an incredible study. But the devil wants to put his throne in place of the throne of God. And that is what the counterfeit pagan high place is all about. And here's the bottom line. Prophetically speaking, J.R., I believe that when, when it comes to crop circles like these and many, many others, when it comes to crop circles, we're seeing the unleashing of an ancient pagan demonic phenomenon in which sights and signs and wonders are being laid out before the, the minds of the gullible, mm -hmm. uh, which will create a false religion, if you will, a sense of being connected with the gods and with power. And, uh, and this is the, the absolute foundation stone of paganism, a sense that, hey, we're connected to the real thing here. We, we're connected to a PowerPoint. And the New Age movement today. The New Age movement today, by the way, honors places like Taos and uh, uh, places like um, Sedona, Arizona, Boulder, Colorado, uh, and of course, the, the Holy Grail, Stonehenge, Silbury Hill, all those places in England are New Age power centers. Yeah. And the Great Pyramid of Giza. Great Pyramid of Giza, a really good high place. Yeah. Now, so, even though it's built in a square, mm -hmm. it still uh, is built from the circle. It, it is the uh, it's epitome of pi. Squares the circle, absolutely. Squares the circle. Yes, it does. Fascinating. <laughs> My, this is an incredible study, and here's the, here's the reason why we bring it up on Prophecy in the News. We believe these are the last days. We're convinced that our Lord is coming back soon, but before Jesus comes, there will be a rise in demonism, a, and the Antichrist, who will be the ultimate um, son of Satan, will make his appearance and will create a world government and a world uh, religion. Mm -hmm. built around this ancient pagan worship of Babylon. And the Bible tells us about mystery, Babylon the Great. And so during this generation, since I'm convinced, and I'm sure you are too, yes. that we live in the days just before the return of Jesus Christ, we're going to see a rise of this ancient phenomena of the high place. And by the way, here's the bottom line. Next time you pick up a newspaper, a magazine, and you read about some crop circle somewhere, the first thought that should come into your head is, this is an illusion. This is uh, a satanic counterfeit for the power of God. Be cautious, be wary, put it in its proper perspective because uh, demonic power and force is being unleashed in these latter days. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and the doctrines of devils, 
and these of course being the latter days, we can expect to see demonic phenomenon, phenomena on the rise. Something that cannot be scientifically explained, but is not heavenly, it is of demonic origin. The only hope you and I have is Jesus Christ, and I urge you to trust in Him and Him alone for your salvation. He can give you eternal life. The devil, only hell forever. This is J.R. Church and Gary's Truman. Until next time, keep looking up.